and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we'll show you how to replace the PCIe SSD in 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display models from late 2013 and later with an OWC Aura SSD. We'll be demonstrating this upgrade using a late 2013 model. If you have a later model, you may notice some variances on the logic board and battery, but the SSD installation process is still the same. We've already backed up our data, shut down and unplugged the MacBook Pro, and we'll be working on a soft static-free surface. We're now ready to begin. The first step is to close the MacBook Pro and flip it over. On the bottom are 10 5-point screws to remove with your pentalobe screwdriver. The two center ones on the hinge edge are different from the others, so let's remove those first. Next, remove the remaining 8 screws. We can now lift the bottom cover off. There's a pair of snaps on the underside, so you may have to pull a bit to detach them. Before we remove the SSD, we'll need to detach the battery connector which is located here. To disconnect the battery, gently lift up on the edges of the connector until it comes free. To remove the SSD module, you'll first need to remove the single Torx T5 screw holding the end in. Once the screw is removed, you can gently slide the SSD module out of its socket. You can now set the original SSD aside, or you can reuse it for data migration, storage, and backup with an Envoy Pro external enclosure. Depending on the model Aura SSD you have, there may be a heatsink or thermal pad on it, though it may vary in size, shape, and positioning. If your SSD has a heatsink or thermal pad, it's very important that you do not move or remove it or else you risk damage to the Aura SSD and possibly your MacBook Pro. The notch on the Aura corresponds with the pin in the socket. Simply line the two up and slide the Aura into the socket until it's fully seated. Then, make sure the Aura is laid flat and secure it in place with the Torx T5 screw. Finally, reconnect the battery by lining up the connector and simply pushing it back into its socket. You can now set the bottom cover back into place and push on it to re-engage the clips. We can now replace the screws that hold the bottom in place. The two screws without the collar on them are slightly shorter and need to be placed in the two center positions along the hinge edge. The remaining 8 screws should have a collar on them and are all the same size. You may now flip your MacBook Pro over, open it up, and turn it on. 